Hello, once again, welcome to this YouTube channel, the Love Professor channel. Um, in today's presentation, we shall continue the topic of defamation by looking at what it means, what it means to publish a defamatory matter, what it means to publish a defamatory matter. We have established previous presentations that um, to constitute the thoughts of defamation, you need to establish the fact that there was a defamation statement made by the defendant, that that statement refers to the plaintiff with for the courts, and um, shortly that it was published. So today we'll be looking at this third component of the third publication of a defamatory matter. And I will proceed to share our, our screen. Um, don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to share the video. Now, the publication, what are the learning outcomes for today's um, presentation? What are we trying to um, achieve? Um, um, what are we trying to achieve? The learning outcomes are three. We'll be able to understand what is meant by publication in the defamation claim. What do we mean by um, publication? We will be able to appreciate the ways in which uh, publication may occur. Some of the examples from decided cases. We should also be able to appreciate the rules that are pertinent in the suit for um, defamation. So, what do we mean by defamation? Defam um, what do we mean by publication, rather? And what is the significance? Now, I must emphasize the fact that until a defamatory statement content is published, it, there is no thought of defamation. No matter how um, much a statement affects the reputation of a plaintiff negatively, if it is not published, then it is not defamation in law. It is not defamation. If the defendant for instance, make a, makes a statement that is defamatory to himself or writes a defamatory letter and keeps it in his, in his, on his table, in his room, in his cupboard, it will not be defamation until it is released. So what is the meaning of publication? It means that the material uh, part of the uh, uh, the, 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 of, the, of the defamatory statement is communicated to a third party apart from the plaintiff. It is communicated to a third party who is not the plaintiff that is suing and who understand, understands it to be defamatory. So if A says something defamatory about B, but it makes that com communication to B itself, tells B to his face, I know that you're a thief. Didn't you steal for your employers some years ago? You know, he says that to the plaintiff. No other person is present when he says it. Only the two of them, the plaintiff and the defendant, that will not be publication in law. Because your reputation, yeah, nothing has affected his reputation. Your, the, the plaintiff's reputation is how the plaintiff is viewed by third parties. Not how he considers himself. He may feel he may feel insulted. He may feel sad. He may feel it doesn't really matter. That is not his reputation that is affected. So it must be that there is a third party that is affected by the publication. If there is no third party who understands the publication to be so, there is no publication. It is also clear that um, it is not publication. Therefore, if the person does not understand it to be to be defamation, for instance, if the person is as hearing defect and does not hear, is deaf and dumb, and did not even hear, even though you have said it, or cannot see, and the thing is a visual thing, then that person has not been communicated with, to not be defamatory. For it to be communication, at least one person, apart from the plaintiff, must have received the content. You know, either read the book, listen to the transmission, or whatever. At least one person is sufficient. It doesn't have to be to the whole world. Does it have to be to 10 people? There's no number. At least one person who is a third party must be 
able to say that they have received this distribution content. And how do you publish it? It will be one-on-one -on -one communication by saying to the person, so it will be physically communicated, it will be um, printed medium that is sold to the public like a book, like newspapers, like, you know, it, which could be hard copy, it could be online version, soft copy, on the internet, you know, so many means and platforms by which you can communicate, it can be WhatsApp communication, email, whatever can be released, any form of communication, ad, you know, physical one, internet, electronic, websites, email, sending an email, information blogs, all the forms of communication systems that we use in the modern world would constitute a form of communication through a third party. Um, I would also like to note some uh, the publication rules. You asked what is called the multiple publication rule and the single publication rule. The multiple publication rule is that um, each publication of a defamation material gives rise to a fresh course of action. And if that will be subject to its own limitation period. So that if, for instance, A makes a statement to B about C, today, let's say today is 10th of May, 2024. Today, the course of action begins to run and the limitation period begins to run. If B then proceeds to make the same statement to D, B2 is liable for defamation. And that's a fresh cause of action against B. So each communication of this information matter gives rise to a fresh cause of action. Of course, there are intricacies in terms of legal practice and on how this plays out in terms of, you know, finding who is responsible for what. For what. And um, so you have some countries that use the possible publication rule. And there are some countries that have introduced what's called one publication rule whereby it cannot be liable for one, that's only one liability if you reproach the substantially the same facts after some time. And um, you can see the UK and the US. In the UK, you have the Defamation Act 2020, 2013, which introduces some forms of one publication rule. Generally, with the, in light of the internet, where you have information that is flying all over the place, in order to ensure that there is a, a limit to endless litigation, some of these rules have had to be interfered with by statute. Detailed um, consideration of these rules will be done in various classes or during research. Um, the examples of cases that have been regarded as non publication, as dental publication, is not actionable generally, but that is also, you have to be careful with that. For instance, if you leave a document on your table and someone picks it up, you did not intend to publish that, it may not really constitute publication. But then it depends on the facts of each case. If you are telling someone, maybe A says to play a defendant says to the plaintiff something defamatory, and the plaintiff's secretary is, is dropping behind the door or overhears the content, that may be publication to a third party. Is this reasonable in the context that third parties could hear what is being said? You know, um, it's been held that when there is a statement of communication to his own spouse, to one spouse alone, it's not be publication because of the unity of spouses that you are actually communicating with yourself. But if there is a third party that is present with the spouse when that statement is made, then it becomes publication to a third party. It's also been held that when letters are sealed or unsealed, as long as they are not addressed to the third party, it will not be pub uh, publication. Again, some of these rules are quite old and may have to be re-examined in the light of the, of the uh, you know, outburst of ICT and a lot of communications and publishers and, uh, you know, now in, 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 interfering with uh, people's reputation. Then we had the common law rules regarding innocent disseminators. Sometimes, you know, because when we say you take a defamatory matter and you give it to a third party, that is publication. And we have said, for instance, multiple, multiple publication whereby every time it, someone repeats that statement, even when you quote the source, you are regarded as a publisher of a defamatory matter. And you can be liable in a suit for defamation. 
But the law, common law underscores the fact that there could be innocent disseminators of defamatory content. For instance, if you apply the rule that I just have just given, it means that if you are a vendor, you take the newspaper that contains defamatory content. Every time you sell a copy, you are publishing a defamatory content. The librarian will explain a book on the on the book stand. Every time someone picks it and reads, they are communicated and they are published in private content. Telephone companies through which you send your news, you know, messages, bookstores, and what have you. So these people, um, they, they, you know, they are in the business of transferring information, of publishing information. In order not to make for endless litigation and to make people that are not necessarily um, at fault, like common law divide the rule that innocent disseminators like this, they are regarded as innocent disseminators, could prove that they are not aware of the content to be defamatory. Did you know that there was defamatory content in what you are selling or you are producing or you are distributing? There was nothing in the work to show that it's defamatory, you, can, you know, libelous. Um, especially when, of course, it's going to likely to be libel anyway, but considering the people that we have mentioned, and that there was no negligence on their part in not discovering that it was libelous. That if they could prove these three things, then they were regarded as innocent disseminators against whom a successful action for defamation would not be brought. So I can see the classical case of Aulawo against the uh, Kingsway Stores for an illustration of that point. Um, in conclusion, therefore, with respect to publication, we can say that publication is communication of its private content to a third party apart from the plaintiff. And um, it must be by the defendant, I assume. The forms may be physical, electronic, virtual, ad copy, any kind of ways that publication can take place. It could be spoken or written words, and it could be picture, pictorials, it could be email, it could be anything that constitutes communication. Communication with his spouse is not regarded as publication because um, his spouse is regarded as the same as you. But if a third party is there, then that person has published. We should also know the distinction between single publication and multiple publication in different countries. I mentioned in one of the presentations that the rules of information continue to change in a lot of jurisdictions. And what is applicable in Nigeria may not be applicable in the US or in the UK. Each country is devising different rules. You know, so actually, because now we are all publishing, every one of us is a publisher with the advent of internet and telecommunications technology. And so I'm realizing the fact that publication is at the time that a defamatory matter is released into the, into the third party that constitutes a thought. Until it is published, it's not a thought. It raises issues of jurisdiction in a modern age as to where you can bring, when is it really published and where you can bring it from which is suit, which is the subject of another presentation. It is not defamation if a defendant is the publisher. If Mr. A tells Mr. B that uh, Mr. B is corrupt, and Mr. B goes ahead to release that information to Mr. C, because come and see you, Mr. A, I'm going to deal with it. Can you imagine Mr. A saying that I am a thief, or I am dishonest, or I'm promiscuous, or I'm bigger most, or whatever. You yourself, you took the information and went to began to release it to third parties. That would not be publication of a defamatory content by the plaintiff. If I'm not sue him for that. Innocent disseminators that we have mentioned are not liable for defamation in the absence of fault, in the absence of fault. So these are some of the basic elements that you should take note of when you are looking at publication of a defamatory matter. And um, they, they constitute, the various aspects that we have mentioned constitute what you regard as issues in your examination. The question might text your knowledge of what it's meaning, what it means to be to communicate to a third party. That, okay, if you send the information to your spouse or to your child or to your, to your neighbor, is it communication? If it is to one person, is it communication? If it is to... The plaintiff himself is it communication. If it is uh, by a newsstand, a TV house, is it communication? So a question might test some of this knowledge and uh, some of these issues. In order to 
for you to um, determine your understanding of what is publication. It is significant that the content, defamation, the, inf the, the, the words they are complaining of is published. Until it is published, there is no thought of defamation. If I abuse you to your face from now to tomorrow and there is no third party present, it is not defamation. It is not defamation until it is third party received. And one person receiving it is sufficient to constitute the thought of defamation. I will see you at the next presentation, Defenses to Defamation Action. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video.